rip into this V8. Soundtrack of America right there, my friends. And it is glorious. The $80,000 luxury full-size pickup truck game is getting a little bit more convoluted. I've driven the Tungsten this year from Ram. I've driven the Capstone many times from Toyota on the Tundra. I'm telling you, this GMC Sierra Denali Ultimate Edition is my pick of the litter. Surely it can't be because of the engine. And is it as simple as that? Well, we'll talk more about that, but that's a huge reason. I think this is the best luxury pickup truck amongst this competition. We still have fat V8s in here. You can get a 5.3. This is, of course, in the Denali, the 6.2 liter with 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque made it to a 10-speed auto you get a three liter diesel as well if you prefer also the styling i mean when i reviewed the tungsten ram i thought the front end was just a little it looked too soft to me this is very macho i love the blacked out chrome it's not just chrome everywhere there's a little bit of chrome at the bottom i prefer that to be the same finish as the the, the gmc like kind of like that darkened gray and that dark uh, polish there. I prefer that to be at the bottom. This just looks out of place here. But we do have some recovery points there, some fog lights down at the bottom. Uh, the daytime running lights here look really, really nice, really macho. So come to the side. Uh, we roll in on 22s. Of course, we got the Denali logo on the side, chrome on the handles, chrome on the mirrors, chrome around the windows. Old school Denali chrome, right? It's everywhere. Chrome on the running board, and this is one of my favorite features. It's been so helpful for the kids with this pop out running board here. Um, it's incredible. Honestly, without this, it would be really difficult for the kids to get in and out for school. And they haven't had any of those issues. We'll get in the inside here in a little bit. Let's go ahead and get to the bed. So we have a couple different buttons here. Obviously, you see the cameras. We'll talk about the cameras here in a little bit. So this is the, the top portion, which kind of acts, acts like a, uh, a table or a desk for the work site. And then we press the big button here, and that's going to release the full uh, tailgate here for you to get into the back put things into the back i also see this step here you can pull off this handle as well clicks into place so it's real easy to pull yourself into the back of the bed um, definitely a luxury feature not necessarily not necessary if you're young and pliable and have good mobility but it's good to have that uh, we also have 400 watts of ac power delivery here and this bed is uh the composite here is very very sturdy so let's go ahead and fold this up i'll go ahead and put on the screen what a uh, payload capacity is max towing capacity which is probably for that diesel um, and then opening this up feels like old man leather in here which i absolutely love i love the hexagonal stitching pattern it would have been nice to have sunshades but i like the material here at the top of the door soft touch and of course we have that bow sound system which sounds pretty darn good as well Get in the back seat. The girl's been asking me to open this window all week, but I, I refuse. We have a nice soft sun uh, headliner here, and uh, we don't have a panel roof, so something like the tungsten uh, or the capstone. I know for sure the capstone has a panel roof. This does not have that feature, but the headliner here is real nice. We've needed these lights to get the kids in the seat belts because uh, they can't always see what's going on, so those lights have been nice early morning. We also have heated outboard seats. We have a USB-C and a USB-A map pockets on each side. I'm gonna move the, the kid seat real quick. You can just see this seat is set up for me at six foot one. Look how much space I have. This is absolutely insane how much space. Big, wide, flat floor is well inside of this Denali. Very, very impressive. Even the attention to detail on the handles, we have leather wrapped and stitched handles here to help the passengers get in and out. Head up display here is part of the technology package. Great head up display. It's easy to customize as well. So you see this info button. Um, you're going to have your Super Cruise information. Yes, this is equipped with Super Cruise. I couldn't find a way to um, custom build it with Super Cruise. So I thought that was strange on the website. You also have a compass. You have your 4x4 information, which is your tilt, your pitch, your roll, that sort of thing. Or you just make it real simple with the speedometer. That's what I do. Paddle shifters. You also have the buttons on the back to interact with the radio on the steering wheel. Steering wheel is quite nice. I wouldn't say I like the stitching here is pretty messy, but I mean, it's not quote unquote a luxury brand. 
but you're you're spending luxury prices here. I gotta turn down the AC because it's not super hot, but 82 degrees outside, you're gonna need some AC. Um, and the AC in here blows super, super cold. We have ventilated seats. We have two different forms of heated seats. You just have one setting for heated steering wheel. It would have been nice to have different, um, I don't know, three different levels of heated steering wheel. We have two different glove boxes, felt lined in here. And you can see this um, topography map. That is a, a reoccurring theme in here. You see it on the seats. You're gonna see it on the sides of the doors as well. I think that's a really cool rugged, um, I don't know, attention to detail. Unfortunately, this one, this map pocket, or it's not map pocket, this uh, glove box area is not felt line like the one up top is. I love the traditional climate control knobs, fan control right here, auto right there. It's awesome. I can fold down the lift gate from here. I can turn off the engine start stop, which surprisingly, it doesn't bother me in this truck. And in fact, I'm getting about 17 miles per gallon for this last 100 miles or so I've been driving. So pretty impressive um, fuel economy, but also it's in the, uh, partly thanks to the auto start stop feature, which is actually a really smooth experience in here, despite the engine being over six liters in displacement. Honestly, I haven't been playing too much with this Google built-in screen. You're gonna have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but I haven't even connected my phone to here because I like the uh, the Google Maps that are built in and the uh, Sirius XM in here is, is good enough for my music needs. I mean, I'm not pulling anything. I'm sure there are tutorials out there how to use the trailering software in here, but for me, taking the kids through CarLine, let me tell you, with the predictive lines, let's go and put it into drive, with the predictive lines, I have a predictive line for my rear wheel, which is, you do, you have no idea, as well as front wheel. You can see this here, but also, it's just so handy because in car line, there'll be like a curb right here and I'll need to be able to see where my back tire is tracking so I don't clip the curb with these massive 22s. If I was getting a truck this big, I would absolutely want to have a 360 camera with predictive wheel uh, path to make my life so much easier. The top down here is fantastic as well. I mean, I could keep playing with this stuff. It's real nerdy. You have a bed camera, I believe, if I remember, you have it in the, um, actually, that's your trailer hookup camera. That's what one of those cameras did back there. Uh, there was a bed camera in the, there it is, uh, an ATV, AT4, gosh, AT4 AEV edition of the Sierra HD that I reviewed. It had a big old, I think it had a big old diesel engine in it. And so, yeah, I just love all the cameras in here. It makes it makes this vehicle much smaller than it is for for people who just aren't, I don't know, spatially aware of a, of a truck this size on the road. So, I don't know. I can't. Let's go ahead and put it in the park so we can get out of the, the cameras. But yeah, I love the cameras in here. A plus from General Motors here in this GMC. Okay, I do have a digital rear view mirror. I think it's good. It's a good digital rear view mirror. This mirror is tiny. It's absolutely minuscule. And maybe it's because, you know, maybe the as you look out of the back, there's just not that. But from my perspective right here, the, this is that this is meant for a coupe or something. This mirror is way too small for a huge pickup truck, in my opinion. Um, but at least it has a digital rear view mirror. Um, vanity lights. Wow. Did you see that delayed response? so you don't blind yourself. I like that delayed response for the slow turn on of those amber lights. Here's your sunroof, nothing crazy there. Of course, we have bars to help you get in and out of the truck. I just kept this in auto all week for drive select, rear wheel drive, four by four low, four by four high, all that. I've kept kept the, um, the lights on automatic. We also have a steering wheel for memory. Yes, you have memory seats over here too. Um, and oh, here's a weird thing. The windows are automatic down in the back, but they're not automatic up. So that has been bothering me quite a bit. Wow. You have a, talking about a, a Sierra. That's a Sierra 6500. Unbelievable. Um, or Silverado 60, same, same company. So I didn't even know they, I don't know if I've ever seen a truck that big pulling a boat. That was absurd. There's some details are like this in the car, the truck as well. You're gonna have Denali here. 
it'll tell you the coordinates on longitude and latitude for finding the tip top of Denali. Oh yes, and uh, we do have a wireless charger, forgot to mention that. USB-A and USB-C down there, um, a 120 volt as well, which probably is about 400 watts like it is in the bed. And we have a little light that illuminates down there to that rubber mat, huge storage um, underneath this uh, removable storage tray. We also have another USB-C and a USB-A there, which is, I forget about because it's it's behind the shifter from my point of view, so it's hard for me to see, but it is there. Um, and the cup holders are great because of the bubbles. These bubbles just suck your drink in and don't allow it to move. But let's go and start driving the GMC Denali, and I'll tell you why I like this better than Ram. Uh, tungsten as well as Toyota's capstone. If you guys remember my tungsten review, I'm like, hey, the, tung the Ram tungsten, yes, it costs how it was equipped. It costs more than a capstone by maybe 10, 15 grand more. But it was so much of, of a better truck. Like the ride quality was better. The smoothness of the engine, right? Those are, are six cylinders. Uh, Toyota's being a hybrid twin turbo V6, three and a half liter. Um, and then we had uh, the Hurricane. Sorry, I'm waiting for a boat uh, to get in. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up. But we have the, the twin turbo inline six hurricane engine, which is so smooth. In some ways it's smoother than this, but the, the V8 has so much charm, stoutness, um, that I absolutely love, love this engine over the competition. The V6 hybrid from Toyota, it's just unnecessarily loud. They pump in noise and the noise that they pump in isn't exactly enjoyable. The one benefit to that setup is that it is slightly more fuel efficient. Maybe you get around 20, 21 miles per gallon. Like I said, I'm, I'm seeing 17 miles per gallon here on this fat V8. I thought I was gonna get something like 14 miles per gallon. Nah, 17 miles per gallon. It's very, very impressive. And it's somewhere close to where the Hurricane inline six twin turbo from uh, Ram was. So let's go ahead and we're going to... <laughs> That's the reason right there. Uh, you don't need to say anything else about the trucks. That's a strong enough reason that you pick this truck. A luxury pickup truck. Ooh, I see a bald eagle up there, right? Maybe that's a sign. Maybe that's a sign that I'm right. I don't know, I'm just, you don't see bald eagles every day. But that's a sign that like, this is the American truck for the American people. As I pass this American flag during early boating time, this is it. 6.2 liter, naturally aspirated V8. Sounds and feels amazing. Great torque. The, the automatic here is awesome. Oh my gosh, it just sounds so good, feels so good. This is, this is the ultimate luxury full-size pickup truck. And I'm not talking about the HDs. The HDs have their own specialness to them and they cost more than this too, 20, 30 grand more than this. Um, but this is just, you know, what is, here's the thing. Is the engine so good that I can forgive it of any of its shortcomings? Does this have shortcomings? Well, not really. I mean, I already showed you all the luxury features on this truck. I thought this truck would be kind of loud because it has single pane glass. It's quieter than the Toyota. I don't think it's, it might not be quite as quiet as the tungsten and the ride quality here while fantastic, and I'm sure it's even better on the, the smaller wheel option, but even on these 22s, the ride quality here is fantastic. I don't think it's quite as buttery as the Ram tungsten, so the Ram has it there. Um, and the Ram has it in absolute horsepower and torque numbers because that Hurricane engine is exactly what it sounds like. It has just gobs of torque and power everywhere, but it doesn't have much character other than just insane smoothness, which is great. I like that engine. I like it so much better than Toyota's hybrid V6. And I remember ranting about that when I drove the tungsten. I'm like, why couldn't Toyota make an inline six for their pickup trucks? And then they could use it in sports cars too. No, 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 they're like, okay, we're just gonna make this big V6. It can only go in our truck-based platforms and it's not refined, it's been recalled, it's, it doesn't sound good. Like, I don't like that setup. 
compared to the competition. It's fine for what it is, but when you're comparing it to big, fat, naturally aspirated V8s, when you're comparing it to silky, smooth, super torquey, and high output inline six engines, it just doesn't hold a candle to them. Look, Toyota, I mean, I'm, good, I'm going off a rant right here. Toyota's, you know, my best engine all time, arguably, is the 2JZ, which is an inline six engine. For whatever reason, Toyota decided not to create an inline six for their newest platform of truck-based vehicles. And um, yeah, the competition does it better with V8s and, and inline sixes. So Toyota for the luxury pickup truck, even though it's a hybrid and has its benefits with fuel economy and, and torque, for example, I would never ever consider it when you have this truck. I would never consider it when you have the Ram Tungsten, which are so much better packages overall. And the ride quality and the luxury is so much better on these trucks than uh, Toyota's. I haven't even tested any of the Ford's offerings on the luxury and I've tested the Raptor R, but that thing is, that's something, you know, from a different universe. Um, so at least when it comes to Ram and Chevy slash GMC, they're eating Toyota's lunch easily, okay? There's no, other than fuel economy, there's no reason I would ever recommend a Toyota Tundra over this truck right here. And I can, screw the Super Cruise. I know that's super cool, but like most people aren't driving their trucks on interstate only. That's the only way I can recommend this. If you're putting tens of thousands of miles on the interstate, then yes, get the hands-free Super Cruise. You're going to eventually be able to like say, hey, I made... Uh, it was a good investment, right? Because this typically costs like 7,500 bucks and other GM-based products that I've driven, even including the ZDX with this hands-free level two autonomous driving on the Super Cruise, all right? It's good software, it's just very expensive. Comfort in here, well, I, the ride quality is good. I'd give it like a solid B or an A, not quite as good as a tungsten, right? Which is just on another level, but materials here, soft touch here. Um, you know, elbows are always comfortable, butts always comfortable. Um, I think I just discovered that in massaging seats, but it seems like it's an on or off feature. Um, maybe I could fly through the menus, but yes, I have massaging seats here and it's doing a really good job so far. I mean, when I press this button, it doesn't, nothing comes up on the screen. So it seems like it's an on or off feature, but I just, <laughs> I didn't even mention that earlier because I didn't even turn because I've always been comfortable in here. I didn't, I've never been looking for a massaging seat function. So anyways, uh, you have that if you, if you want to get uh, pampered even further here. But let's just rip into this V8. Soundtrack of America right there, my friends. And it is glorious. And then we get a yellow. The braking in here is fantastic. Really re meaty and a progressive response to the brake pedal here. It's fantastic. So I think I'm gonna end it there. Um, this truck, you know, if you want this engine in here um, and the technology package, which gives us a head up display, all the cameras and stuff like that, the digital rear view mirror, if you want all that, I think it's around 80 or over $80,000. I think it's worth the money. I would take this over the Ram Tungsten, even though that does some things better in terms of raw performance, in terms of just ride quality, it does it a little bit better. This does everything better than the Toyota Tacoma Capstone, sorry, Tundra Capstone does every single thing better other than panel roof and fuel economy. And oh, V8s just sing to my heart, man. There's nothing, there's nothing that Toyota or Ram can do at this point. I know Ford still has some V8s, but I haven't driven their products. So anyways, as of right now, if I was in the market for a luxury pickup truck, Denali Ultimate with the fat V8 in here, I, I, there's nothing else I could be looking for in a pickup truck, to be honest. This, this does everything I'm looking for. So thank you, GMC, for sending it to me. Let me know if you guys agree with my assessment down below. Would you be picking this or the competition? And why would you be going your route if you had 80,000 80, Benjis? No, 80,000 80, Washingtons uh, to, burn, to burn. I can't even think right now. 
I when I think this much money, I'm just thinking Benjamins. But 80,000 Benjamins is uh, a lot more money um, than what this truck costs. Anyways, I should, I should probably see my way out of this before I make a bigger fool out of myself. Thank you guys. Have a great day and peace out.